At the beginning we meet a man with extraordinary talent, as he wildly plays the piano with a flourish of his fingers. Then in a surprising twist he lights a cigarette by touching it to the piano strings, leaving the audience speechless and amazed. The story takes us back to the first day of 1900, aboard a luxurious ship bound for America. The ship is filled with high society members dancing and enjoying their journey, as well as sailors from the lower decks enduring the hardest and dirtiest work. Among them is a black sailor named Danny, who scavenges for valuables after the party's end, only to find trash. Danny's luck changes when he hears a baby crying on top of a piano. He decides to take in the orphaned infant found on the very first day of 1900, and names him 1900. 1900 spends his childhood in the ship's hold, cared for by the crew. Though he can't experience the outside world only catching glimpses of the sea through a window, the love and care of his ship family bring him happiness. Tragedy strikes when Danny is injured and can no longer work. 1900 spends his days telling stories to Danny, who soon passes away, leaving 1900 an orphan once again. The captain, unwilling to take responsibility, plans to send 1900 to an orphanage. But 1900, familiar with every corner of the ship from his upbringing, easily evades this fate. Thus, 1900 remains on the ship, his destiny intertwined with the piano where he was found. During a party, he mesmerizes everyone with his innate musical talent, playing beautifully without ever having learned. 1900's life is forever changed by the piano, which becomes the center of his existence. He plays jazz for the elite in first class, charming them with his unconventional style, and also brings joy to the passengers in economy class. The piano introduces 1900 to Max, a trumpet player struggling to make ends meet. Max, tormented by seasickness upon boarding, is cured by 1900's unique approach to music. The two, bonded by their humble beginnings and love for music, become fast friends. They play together, their music and the moving ship creating a dynamic performance, unconcerned with the chaos around them. 1900 shares with Max that his ability to touch people's hearts with his music comes from understanding their emotions, regardless of their social standing. By closely observing and empathizing with them, he can play the music of their souls. Despite possessing a talent that the whole world envies, playing the piano to bring joy to others, 1900 has never truly understood what his own heart seeks. As the applause fades and people rush towards their American dreams, he feels a sense of loss, curious about the world and what drives people. One night while pondering these thoughts and playing the piano alone, 1900 encounters a tramp. Like many, he's on his way to America in pursuit of a dream, but unlike others, he's not enthusiastic. To him, the American dream is merely a path forced by circumstances. The tramp has left his home due to a failed marriage and a drought-stricken farm, embarking on this journey for his daughter's sake, determined to fight fate. His resolve makes 1900 even more curious about America. Seeking a connection, 1900 randomly dials phone numbers, hoping for a chat to get a glimpse of the outside world. But 1900 soon realizes that the outside world isn't as friendly as he imagined. People are too caught up in their own lives to engage in idle chatter with a stranger. Amidst this, a jazz musician from America, hearing of 1900's fame, comes to challenge him in a piano duel. This musician Jerry is arrogant, claiming to be the inventor of jazz. He arrives with a group of journalists, making grand statements and mocking 1900. Confident in his victory, Jerry doesn't realize that 1900, who is calm and unacquainted with the concept of a piano duel or jazz, is merely interested in hearing how this so-called inventor plays. The anticipated showdown begins, with everyone eager to witness this clash of talents. Jerry makes a dramatic entrance, grabbing everyone's attention. He starts his performance with finesse, his music resonating with the audience, particularly the elite of that era, earning him a thunderous applause. He ends his piece with a cigarette trick, demonstrating his skill without dropping any ash. 1900, still absorbed in Jerry's music, takes his turn at the piano. Surprisingly, he chooses a simple tune, Silent Night, a piece even children are familiar with. The audience is unimpressed, whispering among themselves, yet 1900 plays on, deeply engrossed in the music, finishing in under three minutes. Jerry, feeling insulted by such a simplistic response, restrains his anger, maintaining a semblance of gentlemanly decorum. He ups the ante with his second piece, once again captivating the audience, even moving 1900 to tears. Max, 1900's friend, grows anxious, hoping for a comeback in the next round. However, disappointment strikes again as 1900 replicates Jerry's piece note for note, leaving the audience impatient and feeling their time wasted. After his performance, 1900 faces a wave of booze but he remains smiling and unfazed. Jerry, now completely enraged, even curses out loud. He plays the piano with intense aggression, his fingers like weapons pounding the keys filling the air with a palpable tension. In response to Jerry's harsh words and aggressive playing, 1900 becomes angry. He asks his friend Max to give him a cigarette and places it on the piano, leading everyone to believe he might simply mimic Jerry again. As the audience starts to mock him calling him a clown, 1900 calmly sits down warning Jerry that he brought this upon himself. With his eyes closed, 1900 fully immerses himself in his music, his performance becoming more intense and sweat-drenched as if numerous hands were playing the piano. The audience is left speechless and astounded by the power of his music, and the room falls silent when he finishes. 1900 then lights his cigarette with the hot piano strings, a testament to the intensity of his playing. The crowd now fully recovered from their shock, lifts 1900 up in celebration of his stunning victory. His fame grows even further, and a music company sends representatives to record his music. It's then that 1900 sees a beautiful and innocent girl outside the window
window, instantly falling for her. He spontaneously composes a love song, intending to give the record to her, despite his lack of confidence in communicating, especially with someone he admires. Holding the record, 1900 is unable to speak to the girl as she walks by. Not willing to give up, he sneaks a kiss while she's asleep, fueling his desire for love. When the ship arrives in America, 1900 finally gathers the courage to speak to her but she disappears into the crowd before he can give her the record, leaving only an address behind. 1900 discards the record and never mentions her again, returning to his life on the ship with his piano. Years later, 1900 tells Max he plans to leave the ship and go to America. On his departure day, the ship's crew gathers to bid him farewell. As he descends the stairs facing the unfamiliar city, 1900 hesitates. After a long contemplation, he throws his hat into the sea, symbolizing his decision to not be troubled by the unknown city of America anymore. He chooses to return to the ship, his true home. Not long after, Max leaves impoverished after years of war. When he returns, the ship is destined for demolition, yet he believes 1900 never left. Discovering a record 1900 had supposedly destroyed, Max is convinced 1900 is still alive and on the ship. He borrows a phonograph from a music store and plays the record on the ship. Indeed, in a dark corner, 1900 appears. The two have a long conversation in the decrepit cabin. Max urges 1900 to leave with him and start a new life on land with a band. However, 1900 refuses, having seen enough of the city during his only attempt to leave. 1900 explains that the city's endlessness overwhelmed him, and he feels that disappearing with the ship is his true destiny, as the end he seeks is right before him. Despite Max's efforts, he cannot persuade 1900. 1900 remains quietly in the cabin, leaving the world behind with a loud explosion. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this.